I suppose I wanted to create something that was very masculine, very beautiful, very sexy, and that was something that really enhanced was the, the physique of a person, or as the case may be, make, make them look slimmer. And with, with the work that I, I, I wanted, I wanted it to have something very, very special and, and unique about it. And I suppose it, 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 this came together with a, a collaboration of Tommy Nutter and myself. Yeah, we, we, we chatted a lot about various things, but we always knew that these, these garments had to have a fun element as well, as being serious clothing, beautifully hand, several rotated. They needed to have, have, have something very special. Tommy brought the, the close fitting shoulder and the narrow shoulder. I bought the long, lean body looks with the higher arm hole uh, and the flare in the jackets. So by combining those two factors, we, we really created something very, very unique. And then obviously with the fabrics played a huge part in all those. The way we could have fun with tweeds, mixing tweeds together, taking something quite or I won't say broad, but taking, taking something that is very, very plain and bland and bringing it to life with, with some additional style features. Well, LA is a very extraordinary city, you know, it's a very exciting city. It's uh, the weather couldn't be better, and fabric wise, you've got many, many choices, but I would favour a light eight, nine ounce wool that's breathable, that comes in very wonderful colours and textures and you could, that can be accessorised either as with silk or linen shirts, some beautiful Oxford bag trousers, just an array of everything, you know, because anything goes in LA. My inspiration has to come from the old movies, the 30s and the 40s. Very glamorous, wonderful lifestyles, you could sense it. And I wanted some of that myself, and I wanted to dress like that. And I've and I maintained that, that desire throughout my career. And they're, and they're the type of garments that you can wear anywhere, you know, whether formally, informally, dress them up, dress them down, just have a lot of fun with them, but it's very sexy and glamorous. It, it would have to be dressing Sir Hardy Angus. He bought me a length of fabric, silver bay flannel, and I made him the most wonderful suit. And he wore it magnificently. He could romance it with the correct shirt and ties, he could really work that garment. And, and I was so proud of it. I felt that was, and I've always strived to, to maintain that. As far as I'm concerned, the, I prefer a gray flannel. I prefer a flannel because it's very versatile in as much it comes, it, you can get it from an eight ounce up to a 15 ounce. Obviously with the 15 ounce you get a much richer pile on the face to the fabric luster. <clears throat> but regardless, you know, flannel is not ideal for some very hot climates. But it's a cloth that is, is so universal in terms of you can wear it for breakfast, lunch and dinner. You know, it's one of those suits that go up through the day and, and cut with a single or a double breasted I those prefer a double breasted grey flannel. And again you can you can bring that grey flannel to the light, have some fun with it. You again you can add that feature with a grain grow grain braid on the edge, just slightly contrasting. You can add features with patch pockets with pleats in. You can have a lot of more fun. It's a very universal fabric and it and, and it tends to work with most styles.
well, I think because of lockdown, people are sick and tired of uh, A, being locked down and B, having to dress so informally and casual. You know, they people want to get out and about and have some fun again, and it's going to reflect in the clothing they wear. They will want to wear our, our, our clothing but with all the new colours and exciting. They will want to go to Annabelle's and let their hair down. This is a real... Uh, turning point in in our history we're gonna we're gonna have the roaring 20s all over again there's a lot of our clients that will want to continue being more casual and relaxed they will they will want to wear our our new style that we're going to be introducing uh the more the little more draped jacket which very very sexy and they will want to continue wearing their 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 their, their casuals and separates I think most importantly, you must have that consultation with your client to understand and get to exactly what he wants, what, what, what occasion the, the garment's going to be required for, really get to that point of view. And then when you get to fitting stages, you don't always take too much, pay too much attention to what the client is telling you when you know fundamentally it's wrong. You've got to be firm and stick to your guns and wait till the, till the garment is more, more progressed before making uh, any decisions in that area. And it, obviously it's very important you've got a good team, work as a team, you know, that, my, I, I, that can be translated uh, to my workrooms. The client's requirements are translated to my workrooms. <clears throat> in fact, I'll often bring the tailor into the fitting room so that he can meet, meet the client. I think, um, the other thing being, if you've not got the passion for this work, you should get out of it now, because it is a real passion. Creating garments, beautiful garments for beautiful people. Um, and uh, like the old effort, they say, measure twice, cut once. Uh, that's obviously the golden rule in anything you're going to be cutting. Um, apart from that, you know, it really is all about communication with your workforce and continuously teaching. And, and also, from my standpoint, the master can learn from his student sometimes. If he listens, you've got an open mind and you listen, you will see some sense and you'll pick up some ideas along the way. I've always been very interested in, in, in women's tailoring. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a must. Always very excited about the challenges that it, it gives one. Um, I was very, very fortunate that I was able to dress very beautiful, very high profile people, very glamorous. You won't get anybody more glamorous than the Bianca Jagger in the 60s and the 70s, or Joan Collins. They you know, were very fortunate to have those big names uh, to dress and, and they who also wore and, and showcased our, our clothing very well on our behalf. So that was immediately a, a huge boost. Um, but then I got working with uh, ladies designers, uh, like I mentioned Sahadi earlier, when he did his menswear, he, he enlisted our help. So the same as Bill Blass, they did their menswear, they enlisted their help. And whilst I was working with them, you know, I, there was a, a cross fertilization of knowledge because, the, believe you me, they're two separate traits. We're cutting for women, cutting for men, they are totally different. I suppose one of the nicest things that I can remember was seeing the Beatles cover of the album cover where they're crossing on Abbey Road and, and, and seeing all your work there in, in one go and then recalling all the all the incidences and conversations you had with them all individually you know to see them all coming together like that was very very exciting for me. 
In the tab collar, again, I touched on this one of the earlier questions regarding the, the movies, the, the 30s and the 40s movies with James Stewart and Fred Astaire, etc. There was a very fashionable statement in that period. The pin, particularly the pin, was a very uh, fashionable one. But I, 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 was, I was wearing a, a tab collar myself back in the 50s. I bought a shirt that was, had a tab. And I love the way that it kept the tie in place. The tie knot didn't slip. It was always in the right place. And, and you always felt extremely well dressed when you went to the room. It was, everything was in the, in the correct position. <clears throat> and then obviously, I started to wear that myself. That, was, that became my staple dress. Well, unquestionably, Fred Stanbury, he was the king of, of, of the trade, was, was the most influential person at that stage in my career. He taught me how pattern manipulation, he taught me the differences between the importance of team, teamwork, cutting and the sewing sides, putting them all together. Such an exciting man to work with. They would explain things beautifully in a very quiet, precise way. And then, of course, Mr. Donaldson, later on in my tuck career, he was he was phenomenal. He was absolutely phenomenal. He had the patience of a saint, and he could simplify things so well.